Okay, everybody. Let's move into kind of the, this course, and this will, this will be more brief. I, I gave you a more in-depth introduction to the field, um, but now we want to kind of move towards more serious content. So in designing this program, we had a whole series of, um, let's say, ideas. Um, In-person training will always be best, which is to say more and more technology permits us to do distance learning, it's called, you know, online courses, things like that. But we have to be honest that human-to-human -human interaction will almost always be more effective as a learning environment. There are some technologies that can make quite a bit of difference. And so outside of this course or outside of this room, what we'll be doing is to take these digital videos and edit them and post them on YouTube. Um, we're developing a system by which they can be automatically subtitled in English and then subtitled in a series of other languages, including French. My apologies about my lack of French. Um, but we can do the translation into other languages via crowdsourcing. And this platform called Dotsub does a very good job of that. Um, we did a test where we had a one-hour video and in the course of one week that video was transcribed into English and translated into Spanish, Portuguese, French, Arabic, and Chinese all in one week. Um, so the kind of exciting opportunity about this, um, about this course is that we can provide a lot of content to a lot of people around the world for very little expense. Um, so the idea of this program and of this course is that we are here in person and we get to work together for a couple of weeks. Everything will be captured and put up via, via this essentially workflow that I just told you about. And then we will also post all of the ancillary information. So uh, PDFs of literature, example data sets, all of that will be made available via uh, web links. So when this idea was born, um, we were looking around for a funder. We tried a couple of places and then the JRS Biodiversity Foundation emerged as an ideal funder. Um, they were very interested in building capacity globally in biodiversity informatics. Um, they are also, and you should know about this, they are also a funder of uh, actual biodiversity information research projects. And so it can be everything from inventory on the ground through capture of existing collections all the way up to something as synthetic as, as this program. So this is, these are large scale grants. They're extremely competitive, but they're also aimed in largest part at Africa. And they're very pleased when they see African proponents of proposals. So bear this in mind. Um, so we submitted this proposal to JRS in January of 2012. It was funded in June of 2012. Um, as Moses mentioned, the original proposal was for six courses and we're squeezing that into something more like nine or ten. Um, so no, Cameroon was not originally envisioned. It was not on the list. Um, but I very much enjoyed meeting Moses, working with him. And so when the idea was suggested for an inventories course, uh, Cameroon really emerged as an ideal uh, place to do that. And then Caleb in, in Ghana 
said, but what about a species descriptions course? And I thought, okay, we'll do that eventually. You know, we'll see where we do it. But then seeing the group of experts that would come for the inventories course, it seemed also to be an ideal group of experts for a descriptions course. So we'll do four days of this course on inventories, and then the last two days will be about species descriptions. I guess we'll call that a different course. But essentially, this is what the broader program consists of. Um, everywhere where you see this red check mark means that those are courses that are done, and the videos are posted, and you can go to our curriculum page soon and have access to all of them in a very organized format. So just like we're here for two weeks and all of these interactions are being filmed, you can go see those past courses. So an introduction with you know, these things about what is biodiversity informatics, how to publish scientific papers, how to write funding proposals, that all exists. We did a course in Ghana on data capture. We did a course in, in Kenya on data cleaning. A course also in Kenya on data publishing. We did a course in Kenya on niche modeling, which is one set of analyses you can use to uh, go deeper into these data. We did a course on biodiversity data analysis beyond niche modeling. That was in South Africa. Also in South Africa, we did a course on building biodiversity informatics institutions. Um, this is the course on biodiversity inventories. We just did a course in January, which was in Uganda, although it was su supposed to be in Benin originally, um, and that was on essentially developing national biodiversity diagnostics. So what is the state of knowledge of the herpetology of Cameroon? Or a question like that. Um, and then coming up, we have courses planned more or less um, on implementing conservation action. Uh, that's likely to be held in Ethiopia and likely to be either late this year or into next year. And then we have three courses that are more tools-based. Um, GIS, R, which is a statistics platform, and a more general biostatistics course. Um, those are topics that perhaps can be taught a bit more mechanically and a bit less depending on interaction. And so for those three courses, uh, we're, what I've done is to commission courses uh, by experts in their use. And so those three will be appearing in the next six months, because all three of those uh, commissions have been issued and accepted and are promised to me very soon. And then all we have to do is a little bit of editing and we'll start posting basically a week-long course on using QGIS, uh, a week-long course on using R, and a week-long course more generally about biostatistics. Um, I mentioned the Ethiopia course. Um, I think we have funds for perhaps two more courses and we've been throwing around these ideas for topics, but as in the case of Caleb and a course on species distributions, um, we're very open to suggestions. So if you see some field, some area, some challenge that doesn't seem to be represented, um, talk about it with, uh, with me or with any of the instructors and that might turn into a course. But we've been talking about um, baseline, um, establishing baselines for biodiversity monitoring. Essentially imagine across Africa if you could pick out the 50 or 100 or 500 
best known sites for a taxon. And maybe something that was surveyed 50 years ago could be replicated with a new survey and then could be surveyed every decade into the future. Uh, we've talked about redesigning protected areas systems to be robust in the face of climate change. And we've talked about one that would focus on measuring ecosystem services. Again, those are just ideas. Those would definitely be into 2016. Uh, any ideas you all have would be very welcome. And then beyond this basic um, set of, of in-person courses and videos online, uh, there are the possibilities of extension to other fields, uh, to other languages, which would be ideal. And then what I think is the logical next step is some sort of co-funding of, of graduate opportunities, graduate education opportunities. And we're already making some of those things happen just by getting experts and trainees together. Um, and so some of these ha things have happened organically, but with funding, that could be promoted quite a bit more. So then just a few, um, a few pieces of this puzzle is about uh, essentially enabling conversations and, and interchanges in biodiversity informatics. Um, we started a journal. It's called Biodiversity Informatics. It's completely online. It's completely open access. And there are no author charges for publication. Uh, it's going, been going for 11 years now. Um, it's not high volume. Luckily, because it's just three professors at two universities who run it, and if it were to become high volume, we would not be able to run it. Um, we have a Facebook group that is now beyond 2,300 members, and that's basically just news and opportunities in biodiversity informatics. And so it gets maybe a post or two per day but it's a very nice forum for you know, new data sets, funding opportunities, just a little bit of everything. So I encourage you to join that and to um, pass it on to your colleagues. Um, we have this web page. Kate is bowing her head, but uh, we have a very bad technological platform that we built this web page on because we got some very bad advice two and a half years ago. Um, I think, Kate, you said something like the web page is like a very unpleasant ex-girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Kate has been suffering quite a bit with the web page. It's kind of half alive right now and will come back. But we made the mistake of... Maybe a month or two after this course is done and everything will be backed up. I'm really sorry, guys. We made the big mistake of doing two courses in three months. And so it really has been a huge amount of work, especially for Kate. Um, anyhow, this will be and kind of is the portal to the whole curriculum in a very organized fashion and with all of the links. You can get to the content via YouTube, but it's much better via this. Um, we also started a, an online seminar series. Um, and this is just kind of special topics in biodiversity informatics. And it's held the final Thursday of each month. So actually, we just did one last week, uh, which was on a new climate data set that had come out. Um, but these are basically topics and speakers that are either very interesting or very current. And again, this is something where we take suggestions. So the 12th seminar, which was on this climate data set, a former trainee who was on the, the Nairobi course, he's, his, he's from Tanzania, he wrote to me and said, 
Tom, what about this, this um, new data set called Climond? Um, could we possibly have a seminar on that? And so I wrote to the, the director of that research group and he consented to give a seminar and he did quite a nice job with it. So this is something that every month there's a different topic. Um, next month, I guess now this month, the March seminar will be about codfish biogeography in northern oceans. Um, but this has become a lot of fun partly because of the seminars, partly because it's so global. And so like the last two sem seminar speakers were, were in Australia. We've had people from Colombia. We've had people from the US. It's essentially, it can be anybody around the world who is speaking and anybody around the world who is watching either live or later. Um, and it's also a way that we can fill in the curriculum. So if a new topic arises or a new tool or a very good new example, I can request a seminar from the person who developed it that then can be put back into the broader curriculum and, you, and part of this, this training um, material set. The YouTube channel um, is now holding over 800 videos. I think more than 800 of them are indeed training videos. A couple of them are of my granddaughters, but, but they're cute, so you can enjoy those. Um, but essentially, this is where all of the training materials go. And this is the sort of viewership that we're seeing. This is 12,000 minutes viewed in a seven-day period. I mean, and those peaks are our global online seminars. And this bigger peak here is a one-week online course that we did on public health applications. Um, so it's, it's a pretty big um, outlet for getting people involved and in accessing this information.